Good evening. The Hanover Area School District Board of Education regular meeting Tuesday, March 7, 2023 will now come to order. Pledge of allegiance, please. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Warbeck, here. Dr. Kopko. Ms. Pochko. Here. Mr. Holbrook. Here. Ms. Bleich. Here. Mr. Maley. Here. Mr. Major. Here. Mr. Reddick. Here. Mr. Stevens. Here. Form established. Okay, executive session report. Pursuant to the Pennsylvania Sunshine Act, the board president wishes to announce that at its regular meeting convened for general purposes on March 7, 2023, the Board of Education of Hanover Area School District held an executive session to discuss matters of employee relations, labor negotiations, threat or actual litigation, and went into a closed or executive session, <clears throat> excuse me, at 5 p.m and began the public meeting at 6.08 p.m. The subjects discussed in the executive session related solely to the matters of employees' relations, labor negotiations, threat, or actual litigation. Okay, at this time, is there anyone from the public like to address the board on agenda items only? One, Marion. Uh, page, let's see, um, two of four, exhibit F1. Well, this, um, this was during COVID. Oh, this was under the safety grant. So during the 21 22 school year, when we shut down here, the um, we had funded the police officer for the Hanover Township Police Department during COVID, but our building was shut down. So we did not utilize that service. So the township cut the check back to us. As a result, we had to send it back to the uh, Crime and Delinquency Department of the Pennsylvania uh, Department of Education. Okay. So that, that is what that check is, returning it to the Pennsylvania uh, Department on Crime and Delinquency. Okay, thank you. The only other thing that I want to do is bring to the board's attention, or especially the public's attention, is this education modified uh, and you were very nice to present me with the uh, contract. And I do see it's for three years. And the thing that disturbs me about it is there are so many unanswered questions. These, first of all, the parents must get permission to have that data input into this. Secondly, it does not state how long this information will be kept. It does not state exactly who is privy to this information. And according to the contract, it looks like any third party that or they deem necessary will get this information. So parents, I think, should be aware and be 
before they sign anything, and it does say that a signature from a parent is required at this time to enter that data into this uh, module, I would suggest that they get those questions answered because this is a paper trail that is going to follow these children and the ramifications for the future could be <coughs> mind-boggling, especially when you think of a child that wants to get life insurance in the future, health insurance, maybe own a gun, any number of things. This information is going to be very important to them and what's done with it is going to be even more important and we don't have the answers and it's going to start being input now. So I just want to bring it to the public's attention. It frightens me and I think there's a lot more work that has to be put into it. Thank you. Thank you. Before we go any further into the agenda, we'd like to bring uh, North Point up for the presentation. Good evening, board. Uh, my name is Tom Williams. I am a development manager with North Point Development, and I'm joined this evening with uh, by Brian Stahl, uh, also on our development team. Um, North Point, as you may or may not know, has been uh, developing here in. Uh, Hanover Area School District for uh, approximately seven years. Um, the exhibit that we're showing up here right now is uh, really illustrates all of the buildings and projects that we've executed here um, in the region. This represents about seven and a half million square feet um, in the uh, in this lower South Valley area um, and many of the buildings that um, really have risen out of the um, out of these former coal lands and, and lands that uh, at one point had some had pretty limited value um, North Point is responsible for a lot of these development efforts um, it's a company that has uh, made promises and kept those promises in uh, in bringing quality jobs and businesses here to uh, Hanover area um, today we are talking about an additional um, development site this is called uh, Building 10. Um, we've uh, so far accomplished 13 development projects down here, and uh, but Building 10, um, just how the numbering goes, will, will actually be our, our 14th. Um, Brian, uh, <clears throat> Building 10 uh, will be is proposed to be constructed at the end of Ziak Drive. That's down off of the, really the last roundabout um, there at the end of the new South Valley Parkway. Uh, building 10 is projected to be just over a million square feet in size. Um, we anticipate, um, actually it's a, it's a speculative development project, so we do not have a tenant uh, in mind for the site at this time, but Generally, what occurs is throughout the, um, the land development and uh, construction process, uh, due to the time that that takes uh, frequently, by the, time, uh, um, by the time the building is complete, we, uh, we have identified a tenant. So we look forward to that opportunity. And uh, I think, again, as you saw on the, on the previous slide, the, um, the, the track record of North Point um, here in the region has brought some, some quality names and, and businesses here to the region. Uh, 
Um, we are here tonight to request a uh, Alerta abatement program for the site. Um, this can be really impactful, incredibly impactful to uh, attracting a quality tenant um, in the region. Um, the tax abatement program is utilized by the tenant in uh, reducing the property tax obligation. Um, it's not actually a savings that's realized by the developer because the, uh, the tenant pays um, in, in the lease structure, uh, pays the tax obligation here. So what this does is make, makes this site incredibly competitive with other sites in the region and really in, uh, in eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Um, tax abatement programs are something that uh, tenants look at closely and analyze closely and it really helps us to attract the best quality um, uh, tenant and occupant uh, for this building. Yeah, th thanks, Tom, and thank you to the board as well. And, and we really have to extend gratitude. Uh, there really has been a very strong public-private partnership between North Point Development and the Hanover Area School District. Um, this property, as with each of the other properties that you've granted Lerda on, is, is tax-exempt currently. So it's property that's owned by Earth Conservancy, so the school district is not realizing any tax revenue <coughs> off of the property currently. The moment that North Point purchases this property, the school district will share in the, the uh, transfer tax revenue, which the district's portion is going to be about 24,000, and then the property will go on the tax rolls immediately, and the land value will be taxable throughout this entire process. So as you're well familiar, the, the LERDA applies only to the improvement portion of the tax bill and phases in over time on the same schedule that the school board has granted in the past. So we're really thankful for this partnership. We think it really has been the catalyst to attract these Fortune 50, Fortune 25 companies to the area and, and has really created opportunities for different programmatic changes, uh, programmatic opportunities in the school district uh, and, and uh, certainly a, an economic development catalyst. So th thank you very much. And with that, if there's any questions from the board, we're happy to answer. Thank you. Anybody from the public? Anyone from the public? I'd just like to know what, what percentage of the uh, properties that you have on, on uh, in Hanover right now are currently occupied? Are currently occupied. So um, all of the buildings are, um, all of them are currently occupied with tenants. Um, this building is being built on a speculative basis, so we don't have a tenant identified for this property yet. So 100% of your square footage is currently they're, leased? They're all leased out, yes. Okay. And, they, and none of them have reached the, the length that they'd be paying taxes on at this I point? I believe the first cluster, which is the Adidas, Patagonia, and Chewy.com building, uh, that one was a little bit different in that there was a pre-existing KOC on that property. That was the first building cluster we did. I believe that's now in year seven of the abatement, possibly year eight of the abatement. And their lease is extended past? They do, yeah. So I don't know which one's the longest, but um, you know, some of the concern with tax abatement is that tenants will shop around, you know, you, so use the life of the abatement and then leave with their jobs. Um, typically what we see though is really two things. Um, certainly not desirable for us, but whether there's a tenant in the building or not, the real estate tax bill is due. Uh, so we will own these properties, we're long-term holders, so that we will pay the taxes ongoing. Surely we like a tenant to be sharing that. Uh, but the other part, and really Adidas is the best example we like to use, is a lot of these tenants become sticky and the amount of uh, infrastructure investment inside the building itself with building out racking and specialized systems, they're sometimes double what, what the investment is in our building itself. Adidas, as the example, um, really modeled their new prototype for their distribution type facility, brought engineers over from Germany to design, and it was about two and a half <coughs> times um, what we spent on the building as far as capital costs they put into, the, in, into that building itself. So they really, uh, they're barriers to leave, essentially. We certainly like to continue these relationships as long as we can but but it's uh, it's hard for tenants to, to leave and plus we've heard that all the tenants have been really satisfied with the workforce and um, you know finding jobs and things so, so we're you know we're hopeful that 
they're renewing at the end of their current terms. Okay, thank you. Very good, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, approval and acceptance of minutes and reports. Regular meeting minutes of February 7, 2023 and the Luzerne Intermediate Unit Board of Directors regular meeting minutes of January 25, 2023. Motion, Motion by Motion. Or Rick Orbick. Second. Second by Rick Stevens. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. General recommendations, items one and two. Can I have a motion? Motion. 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 Second. By Mike Marger. Second by Paul Holcomb. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Finance. To approve items yeah. one to five. I have a motion. Roll call. Yeah, I know. Motion or motion by Rick Orbit. Second by Second. Rick Stevens. Roll call. Mr. Orbit. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Potsko? Yes. Mr. Holmgren? Yes. Ms. Bleich? Yes. Mr. Maley? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Stay on one and two, and yes on a yes. Mr. Reddick? Uh, no on number five, and yes to one to four. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Okay. Jump the gun there a little bit. The superintendent report, right. Mr. Barrett? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yes, I'd, recognize, I'd like to recognize the February student of the month, Fred Martinez. Uh, Fred is in the top three of his class, and this he, he is a um, Hanover area student since kindergarten, plays both baseball and soccer since the seventh grade. He is now a senior. He's a senior captain of the, uh, the soccer team, National Honor Society and council member, and he also works part-time at Michael Moots. I'd like to congratulate Fred for being our student of the month. <laughs> Second part of my recognition this month is to honor uh, uh, bravery and some courage from our bus driver. Last month we had a, an incident that took place on a bus that has been uh, well known to the local media, and it was uh, from a, a, a undesirable piece of equipment that didn't belong in school in a student's backpack. So I would like to recognize both uh, Bill Flowers and Megan Mazaleski. They're both bus drivers with uh, Hanover Area uh, Transportation Company for their bravery for springing into action, pulling over and immediately uh, protecting our kids. So I'd like to recognize those two. <laughs> two students that uh, saw something and said something, we preach this all the time within our classrooms. If you see something, say something to protect everyone around you. So uh, in both of these inst instances that I'm speaking of, uh, Jace, Presto, that's our student at Hanover Green, and Suareen Dublin both saw something and said something, so I'd like to recognize them for their bravery too as well. And then my final piece this month, Mr. Mr. Chairman, is um, every single day uh, or a few times per week, we are recognizing uh, some influential women within our school district to recognize Women's History Month, and that is beginning from our pre-K students all the way up to 12th grade and our women in leadership and our administration in, in our classroom. So um, all this month, I'd encourage our community to continue to check out our social media, recognizing the women in leadership, and that includes within the classroom itself. Uh, and that is my report, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Motion accept the superintendent report. Motion. Motion by second. Paul Holcomb, second by Matt Reddick. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Personnel, the, the approval items, one through 11, I will read number nine, table number seven. Number nine to read, appoint Chantel Grahowski as confidential secretary with a salary of $15 an hour per Annaberg Area School District support contract effective immediately. Do I have a motion to accept items one to 11? Motion. Motion by Stacy Blight. Second. Second by Mike Miser. Roll call. Mr. Orbit. Yes. Ms. Potsko. Yes. Mr. Holmgren. Yes. Ms. Blight. Yes. Mr. Maley. Yes. Mr. Miser. Yes. 
Mr. Reddick? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Yeah, number seven, we need an individual motion. I'll make the Thank motion you. to the table, number seven. Okay, motion by Rick Stevens. Second. Second, Second by Mike Moser. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, new business, old business, any public comment? Okay, future meeting, April work session, Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, and regular meeting, Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. A motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion by Paul Hunger. Second. Second by Rick Stevens, all in favor? Aye. Aye.